Louise, um, in relation to these rooms, which is the upcoming production and collaboration between Koshkem and Anu, um, where did this production begin? What was the impetus and the starting point? The starting point of this production was actually about two years ago, maybe more. Myself and David uh, met a couple of times and casually kind of mentioned the, the notion of working together on something sometime in the future. And I suppose we started a series of uh, coffee shop courting, I would imagine, uh, whereby we'd meet every few months and go and express the same desire again to work together and then think, well, how might it go? And, and then David came back and he said, I'm thinking towards 1916 and I'm thinking towards, you know, what, what was happening for our building in 1916. And so I go off and, and, and see what happened in terms of Cushcane Game building. And not very, very much happened in the Cushcane building in 1916. It was a hotel called the Ship Hotel that was destroyed, but there was no real stories connected to it. So then, as part of our own research in the National Museum, I came across a story about North King Street that I didn't know. And I suppose that was the thing that struck me most on the first instance, was how do I not know this story about a place that I'm familiar with? And the massacre that happened there in 1916, where um, the battalion from the South Staffordshire Regiment came in and over mm. the course of probably about 17 or 18 hours um, systematically murdered 15 male inhabitants of one particular row of houses in North King Street. At length I heard my son below opening the door which was followed by the inrush of the soldiers. I heard my son saying, Mother, you all go upstairs to the top room. These men, they're only doing their duty. You need not be frightened. Later, one of the soldiers was heard to say, the little man made a great struggle for his life and tried to throw himself out of the top window. But we got him. The soldiers buried the four bodies in the yard of the house and replaced the tiles over the grave. They then burned the tick and clothes of the bed, as well as the curtains in the yard. They were seen burning and smouldering by several of the neighbors. The remains of all were discovered on Monday morning and buried by us. The guardroom is in Bolton Street College. They've taken over, they've taken over a base yeah. in the college, like the actual army. So that's okay. where they, they put them up. The whole battalion was stationed there, which is why they said it took 28 hours then to move from Bolton Street College down towards O'Rourke's Corner. But, do you know what I mean? So it's t yeah. about 60 yeah. yards, 20 hours over 60 yards. So they're, they're awake for a long time. Bearing in mind, they're also the guys who've witnessed Main Street, so they're probably, probably suffering from PTSD. So by the time it gets to the sergeant going ballistic in the, in the cellar, he may have thought that was Mr. O'Rourke, he may have thought it was a family. It may be any number of reasons why they're, why they're there, do you know? Um, you say that the work is set in 1966. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about why you've chosen to set it in, in that era? So I think the big thing was, um, we started to think about how 1916 fatigued everyone would was be by the end of the year. I suppose we were thinking about planning it a year or two ago. And going, gosh, by that stage, you know, is the most interesting space to tell it from and time to tell it from, is it that time? Because this series of the inquiries that happened after this event are really important. The inquiries that happened after this event tell us that the findings of those inquiries were considered to be so traumatic that the British government set a 100-year rule from Kew in London to say that whatever happened, the findings must not be released back to Ireland because what might happen then is another rebellion. So you immediately go, well, there's a mystery to be solved. And, and once theatre gives you a mystery or art gives you a, a chance to really question and interrogate, you just grab it. So that was the thing. What's, what's in these files? What's in these missing documents? What's, what are we going to discover about ourselves? And why do they think it's so, so vital that we, we, we weren't able to know so far? So you look at 1966 then and you see a state on its journey you know, the ideology behind the commemoration in 66 is, is economic growth, is looking, is, is forward looking, it's, it's looking at ourselves as a, growing, as a growing state and a growing nation. And then you think about how it's remembered, and it's remembered primarily as, you know, the male hero, the masculine hero of 1916. And yet, somehow these stories have got lost inside there. So it gives us a really interesting place of time to really, really ask about what we remember how we remember and why we choose certain things to remember and not others. We've set ourselves a really difficult challenge with this project. You know, setting it in 1966 mm -hmm. when the state was, was commemorating itself and the journey it's had in those previous 50 years, coupled with looking back 100 years ago through a lens of now, 
is really tricky. So somehow those art forms are allowing each other to tell their own stories and then to change and channel each other in a, in a really, really exciting way to make it very present.